First, give an honor to our God, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We do greet you this morning, our church family, Star of Hope, our original Free Will Baptist Church, and certainly to all our visitors who may join in with us on this morning. This morning I would like to pause first to thank my son Brandon for all he has done to ensure that we were able to successfully have our virtual worship services every Sunday. To him I say a job well done. I also would like to thank Minister Josh Farrar who has occasionally accompanied us during our service. Amen. A great asset for us and who is with us on today. We thank God for him. And certainly lastly, but not least, to my lovely wife who has been the lone cheerleader, a man doing the taping of our services. This morning we say thank you to all. I do want to also thank all who participated in the Justice and Equality Parade sponsored by our annual conference and our presiding bishop, presiding prelate Bishop Frederick Clarida Sr. We must continue to do all we can to ensure that there is justice and equality for all and not for some. We ask you to continue to wear your mask, wash your hands, and to watch your distance as this pandemic continues to increase all around us. With that, we make sure that we keep up with our sick and our shut-in. Certainly our bereaved families that may be going through, our elderly, uh, keep them lifted up in your prayers. And after we have a song, we will have our scripture, First Lady Alicia McCoy, our prayer, Elder Alexander Holmes, our welcome from Sister Ira Verbal.
that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today, the scripture will be coming from Isaiah 40 and 31. I will be reading from the King James Version. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. The word of God for the people of God. Have a blessed day. Good morning, Star of Hope, church family. Greetings from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us go to the throne of grace. All heads bowed, all eyes closed, please. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thou kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all that is evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. My heavenly Father, we come this morning, dear Lord. We don't come in any shape, form, or fashion. But my Heavenly Father, we come in the humblest way that we know how. For dear Lord, we come with a bowed down head and thanksgiving upon our lips. Dear Lord, thanking the dear Lord as if we slept and slumbered in the very images of death. You encamped an angel around our bedside all night long. Then early this morning, you taught us with the divine finger of love. Dear Lord, allowing our eyes to come open to see a day we've never seen before in a they will never see again. we just like to pause this morning and tell you, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for you being God all by yourself. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus, your son, Lord, who hung, bled, and died that we might have a right to the tree of life. Thank you, dear Lord, for who you are and what you do. Now, my Heavenly Father, we come this morning, dear Lord, asking, dear Lord, that you look on the leaders of this country. My Heavenly Father, we ask, dear Lord, that you look upon this earth you've created. 
Asking, dear Lord, that you bless each and every inhabitant from the first to the last, my Heavenly Father. We ask, dear Lord, that you go by the hospitals, touch those, dear Lord, that their bodies racked with pain. My Heavenly Father, go by the nursing homes, dear Lord, touch those, then touch the ones that look after those in the nursing home. My Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless those, Lord, who bow down behind prison bars. Then, my Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless the bereaved all over the land and country. Look on our pastor, Lord, continue to give him that he will continue to give us. Now, Lord, we ask that you bless the church, Lord, in each and every church standing with the doors opening your name. My Heavenly Father, we thank you. Ask you to continue to bless us, lead us, and guide us, protect us, and place a hedge around all of us. This we do ask in the mighty name of Jesus. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Good morning, Star Hope Church family. Welcome to Star Hope YouTube site, where our pastor is Bishop Wayne McCord Sr., and our First Lady is Alicia McCord. Our associate is Elder Alexander Holmes and Teresa. We would like to welcome you here with us this morning to please sit back, take your shoes off, open up your heart, mind, and listen to thus said the Lord. And as always, when our doors are open, you, you, and you are always welcome at the star. God bless you and be safe. We thank our associate elder, Alexander Holmes, for our prayer, First Lady McCoy for our scripture, certainly our welcome coming from Sister Ira Verbal. After we have heard our next selection, I will be back before you with our message on today. Amen.
Amen. We thank the ones that have come forth for our scripture and our prayer and certainly our welcome on this morning. Amen. Our scripture has been read, but I will read it again for you hearing Isaiah, the 40th chapter, the 31st verse. Very familiar passage of scripture. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Let us pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, as again we stretch our hand to thee, no other help we know. Lord, we just ask you to decrease me. Let your words increase through these old lips of clay, that it might be a word for our people on today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Has anybody ever heard of a place called South of the Border? I can answer that question for a lot of you, and the answer would be yes. It is a place that's located on the state line of North Carolina and South Carolina in the city of Dillon, South Carolina. But in the day, I-95 used to be the kind of road that you could drive across it and it would make you impatient because you could not see anything along the drive that was interesting. But there was one thing that really caught a lot of attention. That was the stretch from New Jersey to Florida. And during that stretch from New Jersey to Florida, you would see signs and signs and more signs. That should say, that would say, uh, there's 100 miles left until you get to the south of the border. Or you would see it say, just wait till you see all they have for you at the border. Even if it wasn't worth seeing, you would begin to get curious about stopping at the border. In fact, a lot of people stop at the border just to see what it looks like. And after stopping, they found out not only do they have gas and food for those, but they also had things or stuff that we really didn't need, but we wouldn't mind having it. And just because we could say we bought it at the border. And to really drive that point home, you had to have the bumper sticker so that you can prove to your family, your friends, your co-workers that while you were traveling, you stopped at the border. Well, Bishop, what does all of this have to do with today's text? Well, as we wait for God to surprise us with the good things in our lives, it's sometimes like driving down a long, long road where we are waiting and waiting for the miles to go by before we can get to someone, some place to stop like the border. Just like the child who can hardly stay awake because their father promised them that they might stop at the border because he promised them uh, the next time we travel, we will be able to stop there on our way to where we're going. And you know, as children, we held on to that promise. Even if it was the next summer, we reminded Daddy of the promise that we have to stop at the border. Well, just like children who hold on to their parents' promise and program themselves to wait, we don't want to give up on God's promises, but we have to wait for God to keep them. Before Jesus came into the world with God's good news for everybody, People waited for him a long, long time. Finally, Jesus came. By then, some people had stopped waiting. They missed something that was really special. God will surprise us with good things if we wait for him to keep his promises. When you're ready, God will give us what we need. It's worth waiting for. Today's text promises 
are worth waiting for. The Bible is filled with the promises of God from Genesis to Revelation. We read of normal people that receive the promises of God. These promises are sealed by the highest authority, which is God's word. In Hebrews 6 and 13, it says, But when God made a promise to Abraham, since he had no one greater by whom to swear, he swore by himself. When God makes a promise to his people, it will come to pass. First of all, what is a promise? A promise is a covenant or declaration that one would do exactly what they say, or something will happen just as they pledge. One of the greatest promises God made in history was the deliverance of his people from an Egyptian slavery. God would call a man by the name of Moses to declare to Pharaoh that it was time for his people to be set free. Pharaoh didn't take God's word seriously, and the effect was catastrophic. We read of the many plagues God sent Egypt that led Pharaoh in the end to release God's people, only to regret it and cause more problems for his army. The nation of Israel crossed the Red Sea and was set free after 430 years of slavery. Now that's a lesson in waiting. The nation of Israel was going through a time of oppression. They would spend 70 years in captivity, but God would be waiting for them with plans to prosper them. Not plans of evil, but of hope, love, and peace. The Lord loves his people, and the promises show his relentless pursuit. In our lives, God has good plans for us, filled with hope and a future. Sometimes God keeps us in a season of waiting to prepare us for what is around the corner. If we will stop, step into uh, too early, we may ruin the opportunity he has prepared for us. When David was anointed as the next king of Israel, his rule did not start right away. In fact, he became a servant to King Saul. That was the perfect place to learn about being a king, serving under a king himself. We may not even be aware of all that God is trying to teach us in our season of waiting, but we can be assured that we will come out of it having learned important lessons for the next season we step into. Whatever we are waiting for, it is God who will cause it to happen. So it should be him who we put our hope in. When we put our hope in our ability to make a situation come to pass, we set ourselves up for disappointment. That disappointment can eat away at our faith. So we make sure we put our hope in something that is immovable. God will be faithful to us forever. He will never leave us or turn his back on us. We can have confident hope that his plans are for us are good. If we put our hope in truth like these, we will never be disappointed. I have no doubt that you have heard people talk about how we live in an impatient society, fixated on the instant gratification and love for shortcuts. We've been conditioned to expect things to happen quickly uh, just look at how annoyed we get when the Wi-Fi is too slow. Or if a package just takes too long to be delivered. When we read the Bible story of heroes, heroes like Abraham, we forget or resent how long he had to wait for God's promise to materialize. When we read the account in Genesis, we get from the point of a promise being spoken to the fulfillment of that promise in about five minutes, but it lasted 25 years. 
25 real long years. Each of those years contains 52 weeks. That's about 9,125 nights of waiting. Praying and dreaming about the promise that's yet to come. Those 25 years have felt like forever. Plenty of time to think about what God had not spoken. Plenty of time to get frustrated. Plenty of time to be impatient and irritable. In fact, if you know the story of Abraham and Sarah, you know that they tried to help God to bring his plan to life when doubt crept in. But Abraham and Sarah laughed at God's promise to them of a child. But here is the thing about God. His plans don't need our approval. And they don't run on our schedule. We may not even be aware of all God is trying to teach us in our season of waiting. But we can be assured that we will come out of having learned important lessons for the next season we step into. Sometimes the wait is for our benefit. I got three points I want to carry this morning. One is sometimes we wait for our benefit. Secondly, that we want to know that we have to wait and not get disappointed. And thirdly, we got to trust God to believe and do what he said. If we wait on God, we don't have to be disappointed. Isaiah 49 and 23. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Those who hope in me will not be disappointed. God told Abraham and Sarah that he would give them a child. I think Abraham and Sarah thought they had a big part to play in that miracle. But really all God needed for them to do was to trust him. God would do the impossible things for us. Then we would choose to believe in him. Just like Abraham and Sarah, we wrestle with how God would do something and talk ourselves out of trusting him completely. That is why he tells us not to lean to our own understanding and reminds us that his ways are higher than ours. Whatever we're waiting for, it is God who will cause it to happen. So it should be him who put we put our hope in. And when we put our hope in our ability to make a situation come to pass, we set ourselves up for disappointment. That disappointment can eat away at our faith. So we should make sure we put our hope in something immovable. God will be faithful to us for forever. He will never leave us or turn his back on him. We can have confident hope that his plans for us are good. If we put our hope in truth like these, we will never be disappointed. God is faithful this morning. Isaiah 55 and 11. So shall my word be that God goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish what which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing which I sent it. It's easy to doubt what God has said when a little time has passed when we have spoken. Sometimes God speaks to us to give us courage to go. Other times he speaks to us so that when situations look dark, we can hold on to what he said into the beginning. God spoke through the prophet Isaiah to foretell the coming of Jesus, who was to save the people of Israel and all the rest of us. Isaiah described how lamb being led to the slaughter, born the sin of many. <coughs> Around 700 years before Jesus was born, in hindsight, we can clearly see the correlation between things Isaiah said and the life that Jesus lived. However, there are many points where the Israelites would have wondered if the Messiah was actually coming. But why would God say this thing so long before Jesus came? 
Why would God tell Abraham about a child so long before the child was to be born? Why would God keep us waiting for the things we desire the most? He does it to fortify our trust in him. He does it so he proves himself faithful. Jesus often spoke about what he was doing to fulfill the prophecies written in the scriptures. In all Jesus did, he reminded the Jews that their God had been faithful to them and had done exactly what he said he would do. God is constantly reminding us to trust in him alone. He wants to lead us into a deeper relationship with him by teaching us how to trust him. No, it's not easy to wait. Yes, it may be long, but let's remember that God does not give empty words. If he said that something will come to pass in our life, then we can be assured that he will bring it to pass. Just as he promises, God's promises are worth waiting for. Like driving down that long, dusty highway, waiting to see someone on the way. But when you see somebody, your heart begins to be glad. That's how it is with Jesus. So many of us want things to happen right away. We want things to be microwaved. But I come to tell you this morning, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. We are mount up like a wing of an eagle. We shall walk, not get weary. We should run, not faint. The promises of God are worth waiting for. And our waiting is designed to strengthen us. Don't lose heart and don't give up because the promises of God are worth waiting for. There may be someone this morning that's been waiting for God to answer your prayer. God to answer whatever you have prayed for. And because it has not come to pass, your faith begins to waver. But I challenge you this morning to wait on the promises of God. His words are true. I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake thee. Wait, I say, on the Lord. There may be one this morning that's tired and you've been waiting and waiting and today is your day why don't you confess with thy mouth believe within thy heart that Jesus Christ the son of God died on the cross rose and is sitting on the right hand of the Father, interceding for us right now. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. Today is your day. If that is you, please find a church home somewhere. We welcome you here at Star of Hope. But if not, please find a church near you that you may have a covering let us go to the throne of grace Father God in the name of Jesus Lord we just want to say thank you this morning Lord we thank you for what you've already done for us we thank you for what you're doing for us right now Lord we thank you for what you're yet to do Lord, we realize that waiting sometimes is to our benefit. Lord, we 
learned that waiting can sometimes bring disappointment. But Lord, if we just trust in you and believe in your word, we know that it shall come to pass. Lord, we ask you to touch the sick and the shut in. Touch those feeble bodies who are racking with pain. Touch those essential workers who are out on the front line. Continue to keep your loving arms around them. Lord, continue to touch all the families that have lost loved ones at the hands of those that sworn to protect and serve. Continue to touch them. Touch us as a whole. Lord, touch this feeble land. Who stand in the need of your prayers. Lord, we just ask you to have your way this morning. Touch me, oh Heavenly Father. Strengthen me. My family, my church family, my leaders. Lord, we just ask you to have your way. Lord, continue to bless us. We will continue to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Blessed Holy Ghost. We count it done in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank God for you on today. Again, we're here every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock by way of YouTube. Our Bible study on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. virtually. Our Sunday school, Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Join us. And again, God desires to do great things for you. If we would just trust in him. With uplifted hands, may the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth and forever. Let us all say amen, amen, and amen.